Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. Are you seeing everything that's going on? They're, they started out with a weather balloon and then all of a sudden it starts out, we don't think these other things are weather balloons and they're just shooting them down out of the skies all over the place. They're going to really make these aliens unhappy and the aliens are going to retaliate and they're going to wipe out a bunch of people. They're just going to disappear and uh, nobody will know what happened to them, but it'll definitely be the aliens. It won't be a, a rapture or anything silly like that. It'll it'll be another story. So that's why we're here. We're here to warn everyone, to make them aware. I do it all day long to anybody who will listen that something major is going to happen, and it's going to happen very soon. They're setting it up. The world stage is setting it up. Um, it's all over so many different YouTubes. They have so much good information. And um, the setup is right in front of us. And I warn everybody who will listen. I say, when this moment occurs, they're going to tell you that we were taken. That aliens took us out of here because we were in the way. We were the pests of the world. And um, that you don't need to worry. Everything's going to be fine now. And the new government's going to take care of you. I got a light flickering. And hold on. <clears throat> there, a little bit better. And so that's what we do. Um, we warn them that this event is going to take place. They, If they haven't believed by now and given their life over to Jesus Christ and believed on him alone and only him, no works and only him, that that's the only way to get into heaven, um, by this time, what they need to hear is when this event takes place now, just like Elijah and Elisha say it every time, Elisha was there. They told him, don't you know that today is the day they're going to take your master away from you? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He didn't believe it, um, but he knew about it. And even Elisha told him, if you see me go, you can have my cloak and you will get a double portion. The 50 prophets. Whether they saw it, I don't think they would have seen it. They saw something because they scoured the mountainsides looking for Elijah that he might have been dropped somewhere and he couldn't be found because he was in heaven. So let's get into the pictures and try to make this a quicker video. I make my videos too long. Let's get into some pictures here. Let's see. Let's start here. I showed you this before, that from the Revelation 12 sign to the day of equal parts, anybody can go look it up on date and time right now and see that on this day, that there are 12 hours in a day. This is the day Jesus was speaking of when they were talking about Lazarus dying, when he said, are there not 12 hours in a day? This is the day that Lazarus died on March 16th. Uh, March, 16th. March 17th would be the head of the year, every single year. It'll change days for us because we don't uh, obey the 364-day calendar, um, but it's always on March 17th. Let's see here. I can get rid of that. Okay. Now, I found this on YouTube. I'm sorry, on uh, Facebook, and I don't recall who posted it, um, but... This 11-11 will, will not stop happening. It just keeps happening. Um, I keep asking myself, is your brain just telling you to look at your phone at a specific time? I mean, I'll go for hours without touching my phone, and then out of nowhere, I'll open my phone, and it'll inevitably be 11-11. And I just, it just, it's amazing how it keeps happening. And again, I ask myself, is your inner clock doing this to you? But I have something here to show you that it is not our inner clock doing this. This is our, and I've heard a couple of things. 11 means something about uh, judgment is coming, which is true. The day of the rapture is also the day of judgment. It is a great and terrible day. And um, But I've also heard that this is your angel standing beside you right now, uh, making you take notice of this moment to comfort you, to let you know that they're there and they're ready to carry you away right now as you're listening to this, wherever you are, driving, standing, talking, eating, sleeping, well, even sleeping, you might not be aware while you're sleeping, but no matter what you're doing right now, your angel 
is next to you, ready at any moment when that trumpet blast goes off to carry you out of here, to harpazo you, to rapture you, to catch you away, out of harm's way, um, to heaven. And that is going to happen literally at any moment. I know I say that a lot, but it literally could be any moment. So this 1111 comes up all the time. On the 11th hour and the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, fighting in World War I officially stopped after Germany signed an uh, armistice agreement with allies earlier in the day in 1954. President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed legislation that changed the federal holiday name from Armistice Day to Veterans Day, November the 11th. Um, these, I, I found this, uh, anchor scripture, Matthew chapter 20, verse 6, and about the 11th hour, we went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, I saith to them, why stand ye here all day idle? So apparently this is a moment that people are going to be asking us, why are we watching? I think that happens to us constantly anyway is why are you watching you don't know when it's going to happen could happen 10 years from now right so why watch something has happened and and again i've been watching for a very long time i have timelines from 10 20 years ago that i've been working on <clears throat> and it's not a prideful thing because honestly i've seen some amazing youtubers out there that have twice 10 times the knowledge that i do so it's all about the Holy Spirit, and when the Holy Spirit decides to give you something, that's something you run with, just like um, when the man left town, he gave a certain amount of money to three different types of people. Um, the last type of person just buried the money and said, well, I didn't want to lose any of it, so I just buried it. This is the Word of God. The other one took that money and used it a little bit, and he made a little bit, and so he was, uh, he was the, how do you say, the, 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 uh, the master was happy with that. And then the other one multiplied that little bit of money quite a bit. And the master was extremely happy about that. Our job is to save people, not us now. Our job is to tell people um, what's about to happen. And that's what we're doing against all odds and against everything else. That's what we do. We tell people and we warn them that this moment is about to come. So keep going. And yes, there it is. It keeps happening. Now, Kim Hicks does a lot of, finds a lot of interesting stuff. She's on the WAC Pack. It's on Facebook. It's not mine. Um, you can go over there and subscribe. And she puts out a lot of good stuff on there. A lot of a lot of people in the WAC Pack do, and I really like their uh, Facebook a lot. And they they put out a lot of really good information. Um, she says so late. So last year in November, I posted about the poppy. It is and its connection to 1111 in Israel. Today, the Holy Spirit brought it again to my mind with new very interesting information see how uh, the holy spirit will put something there and then add to it later on that's that's what how salvation actually works you are saved and then he just keeps adding to you and adding to you i've seen youtube pages go from 100 subscribers to twice and three times as many as i have just because they of the the wonderful blessing that god has given them and the work that they do and uh, love watching these YouTube channels grow because the bigger the YouTube channels do grow, I believe that they're going to make it through this uh, rapture of the bride and they're going to be such a wonderful source of information for the saints of the tribulation. And um, just like Alicia, um, it didn't take him long to drop to his knees and realize he'd missed the rapture, and but he received a double portion. But who didn't? The 50 prophets didn't, because they still didn't believe, even though they saw. They still didn't believe. So there's still a, a, a large group that won't. So let's see. The seed of the poppy can stay dormant for up to 80 years. There's that 80 years before it blooms. The poppy blooming season is right now in Israel. 
as they move these months around back and forth. We missed a month. We added a month. We uh, we we look at this. We look at that. And the, the fact is that the poppy seeds are currently uh, uh, blooming right now in Israel. They are blooming right now, which means it is the eleventh month. It uh, we're trying to say that uh, we're going to move Rosh Hashanah here and and over there, but uh, ideally or factually, the uh, the Feast of Trumpets definitely happens in September. It, it's hard to move that around and, and try to add a month to it. So, um, The lifespan is around 120 days from beginning to end, and there are over 600 species. And the best part in Hebrew, poppy means bride. 11th day, 11th month, 11th hour. Jesus... The people came to Jesus, not knowing how to pray, and they asked Jesus. This is the most powerful prayer that you can pray. And within this prayer is a lot of information. It's not just a prayer. There's a lot of information within this prayer. The prayer starts out with God, and it ends with God. It starts out giving glory to God, and it ends giving glory to God. Our Father, who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the beginning we have, Hallowed is thy name. So uh, Jesus is glorified. God is glorified. Uh, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. He is glorified at the end. In the middle, his will will be done. It is not currently being done. Obviously, you can look around and see it is not being done right now. But it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Currently, it is, it is being done in heaven. And it will be done here on earth. Give us this day our daily bread. This is our... Um, gospel uh what we read in the bible and give and to give it to us means to help us understand because we live in a sinful world and some of these things are deep and very difficult to understand um, our understanding is not uh, based on our salvation our salvation is giving up everything just like elijah elisha did as soon as he saw elijah rapture he tore off everything and put on that cloak and that is the only way to be saved is to put on the cloak of god Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If you harbor anger against anyone, um, you're basically saying here that uh, God will forgive you as well as you can forgive others. So um, please don't hold anything. Uh, everyone's a sinful nature. Everyone still deserves to hear the word of God and to know that they are not unredeemable, that they too and throw everything off and come to the cross and and kneel down and just, and just say Jesus I don't I don't know anything about you I I I know that there's something there but I, and I know that I do know that if there is a hell it is where I will be going if not for you and that's the greatest prayer ever that you could ever say so lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil i mean we have the story of job and what he went through and that's a you know a testing period Lead us not into temptation there it is again 11 11. march 17th saint patrick's day the green day is always and if we obey god and read exodus 12 it is the new rosh hashanah so many people are stating that we're not going to go until the last trumpet blast on Rosh Hashanah in September. Listen, read Exodus 12. It was changed by God himself in Exodus 12. Rosh Hashanah is no longer in September. The Feast of Trumpets is. Rosh Hashanah has been moved to March 17th. On Rosh Hashanah, they will blow trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets is still on September the 15th, but on Rosh Hashanah, March 17th, they will blow trumpets. So everybody's trying to say we aren't going till September. Um, you have to read that passage where it was changed to, um, in Exodus 12, to the head of the year being in March. 
on March 17th. The reason I think that, of course, like I've said, is not only is it the day Jesus mentions the day of equal parts, it's the day that we can look at today and even 600 years from now and see that it is still the day of equal parts. I believe that the day of equal parts has always been on March 16th, and it has been since the creation of time. The four-star Algenib skirts a lot across the horizon also on this day, seen in Jerusalem. So um, this is the day Lazarus dies. A lot of stuff took place on the 16th, showing that the New Year's on the 17th. 644, what could that mean? I, was, I opened my phone and it was right there. I was like, really? Nobody comes to the Father, lest the Father draw him. My favorite verse, John 6, 44. This is a beautiful story. I'd like to, everybody, I was going to go really deep through this, but then I thought it's a lot, and I uh, didn't want to take up a bunch of people's time, but read the book of Esther. In the book of Esther, you have the wife, who is the uh, queen, who has been put away because she will not obey the king's rule. You have the bride who is brought in and given everything that the queen had. I don't even know what she was thinking. Of course, we don't know what the Jews are thinking right now and, and why they have given up on their birthright. But they are as um, Esau. They have given up their birthright. And uh, we are as Jacob. We have that birthright. We are as Leah. The rightful uh, bride was supposed to be Rachel, but it... It was uh, Leah, because Leah was first. Um, you have in this story um, the accuser. So Satan is in here accusing the queen, which is what uh, Satan has done. And truthfully, truth be told, um, they do not listen. They will not listen. As a matter of fact, they are as the 50 prophets who watched Elijah go they still, even though they see, they will not believe. They will still go searching in the mountains for Elijah. They will not believe. Elisha knew exactly what happened when it happened. He finally believed when he saw. They will not believe. The Jews will see this rapture occur and will not believe. They will still usher in the Antichrist by mistake, thinking that this is their new Messiah, and it will pale by comparison to Jesus and what Jesus did when he was here and what he will do when he comes back. So read the read the book of Esther. It's not a long book. And in there you will see all of the all of the pictures of everything um, of the uh, of the scenario that we're going through with the bride and with the wife and with the Satan, the accuser, and with the Jew, and how they were, you know, the Jew representing the, the, the queen, and how they were forsaken. It's a really beautiful story. You see here 10,000 of uh, talons, 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands upon thousands. So in here, what I wanted you to, to notate was, in the book of Esther, it's a beautiful uh, rapture scenario. The entire book is a perfect rapture scenario. You see here in the 12th month, that is the month of Adar, on the 13th day of the same, the king commanded his decree, drew near to put into execution in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it turned to the contrary. So the Jews will be protected. They will pre be protected through this time. But this is the 13th day of the 12th month. What day is that? That is February the 27th. Purim, the day they celebrated, the day that they were not killed, the day that uh, Mor now Mordecai is the father of uh, Esther, and Esther winds up being the bride. And uh, Mordecai uh, throws this feast, this celebration, that uh, they were not killed and wiped out. And they throw this celebration on the 11th month and the 11th day, if you count from March 17th as the head of the year. And you go 348 days, 347 days, there's a day at a time in there somewhere. I'm still trying to track it down. But 11 months and 11 days to the very day lands on Purim. Purim lands exactly 30 days before Jesus goes to the cross. 30 days 
from February the 28th, which is Purim, will be March 30th, which is the date Jesus went to the cross. It is also, if you start your flood on October the 31st on Halloween, again, this Gregorian calendar, lines everything lines up. Uh, it all makes sense when you when you put it on this time on October the 31st when you count like the Bible says 150 days the water begins to subside that happens 150 days after October 31st is March 30th that is the day that Jesus went to the cross the Bible also says in the first month in the 17th day and remember um, and I'm sorry in the seventh month and the 17th day remember they were on a different timeline then that's why the second month and 17th day when the flood begins is actually Heshvan 17 it's actually October the 31st didn't make this happen I just did the math and when I did the math it landed on Halloween the night of Halloween and then the second month and the 17th day is the is the time that uh, Jesus rises and defeats death this is the day the ark rested on Mount Ararat reverse the curse you can't you can't make this happen. It just happens when you put it on a tie. That's why I love timelines, because you can't force it. it. It just will land perfectly. So, and then Jesus goes to the cross on March 30th, and, you know, you have April Fool's Day in there. It all, everything lands in there. You have Mary becoming, con conceiving on December the 25th. It's It's crazy. You have Mary, John, leaping in the womb as soon as Mary comes to visit him. On New Year's Day, I mean, it's it's incredible how it all lands. It lands too perfect. So, let's see here. Yeah, that happened again. To establish this among them, they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and the 15th day of the same yearly. So, there's two days in here. As the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies... And the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day. So on the 13th of Adar, something happens, which is February the 27th. Something happens. They are in fear of their lives. But something good happens. They celebrate the 14th and the 15th, which is February the 28th and March the 1st. They celebrate this because that bad thing didn't happen to them. And they are now celebrating and resting from that. This happened again. Is that today? Yeah, that happened today. I just uh, pulled my phone out of my pocket, and that was the uh, that was the thing. And I keep thinking again: Am I making this happen? Am I? Is my brain going? You know, uh, it's time to pull your phone out. You know, and and so I ask myself that because I, I mean, it's just it just keeps happening. It won't stop happening. I'm not trying to make it happen, but then this happens. I call to pay a bill. Those are the numbers, four different prompts that I have to uh, to, to do to get to pay this bill. <laughs> it, it, that that you just, what? Eleven, eleven. I mean, seriously, it just that's the prompts that I had to use to pay this bill was eleven, eleven. I, I don't even, uh, as you can see, my brain didn't make that happen. So anyway. Let's go, whoops, made a mistake there. Let's go here real quick and show you where we are currently. Right now, currently, we're coming up tomorrow on Valentine's Day. It is exactly two weeks from tomorrow to Purim. Purim, again, is exactly 11 months and 11 days from the head of the year of March the 17th. February the 28th, 14 days after Valentine's Day. Things are ramping up. I don't know if you're seeing what's going on. Um, and, oh, and let me finish. Purim is exactly 30 days before Passover, February the 28th. And you have March the 1st. That would be your first day. And you count out 30 days exactly. And you come down here to the day Jesus went to the cross. You can see down here at the bottom, he went to the cross on March the 30th, which is Nisan 14. It is 14 days from the head of the year to the day Jesus went to the cross. It is 14 days from Rosh Hashanah, or Feast of Trumpets, to the date Jesus was born. It all, numbers are awesome. They all line up. There's no mistaking numbers. 
they just God made numbers and they are perfect. They line up. I love I love timelines because this puts everything in pers- uh, into perspective. It was from March from our January first to the day Jesus went to the cross on March thirtieth. It is exactly eighty eight days. Up there at the top, the water subsides. That's 150 days from the date the flood started on October the 31st. 150 days later is the day the water begins to subside. This is the day Jesus goes down to Hades. And I had a lot of questions about this. Yes, he went to Hades. Hades was located, paradise, he went to paradise, Hades. He, it was located in hell. It was uh, Paradise was located in Hades. He led captivity captive. He went down there just like Jonah went into the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Jesus went down there for three days and three nights. He did not go down there to suffer. He said at the cross, it is finished. He bled out every drop of his blood, something you and I could not do. We could bleed out some of our blood, but as soon as we bleed out some of it, we would lose consciousness. Jesus did not. He stayed conscious and said when every last drop of blood poured out of his body, every last drop he gave up for your sins and mine, every single last drop, then he said, it is finished. He did not go to Hades to be punished in any kind of way. He went to Hades to lead captivity captive. He took everyone previous to the cross, where they were held, in paradise, and carried them to heaven. They have not received new glorified bodies yet. They will not receive those bodies until the rapture occurs, when we all meet the dead in heaven and the living go, then we receive our brand new immortal bodies. So, Tell everyone, read the book of Esther, tell everyone that will listen that they're not at this point, at this late in the game. And I'm not saying it's for certain because there might be those who will. And I see it on Bob Barber's uh, uh, End Times Dreams and Visions that, and these guys have uh, wonderful things that they do for so many people. Um, Watchman Adam does a lot of wonderful things for so many people. Um, He literally, he takes donations and he literally buys food and clothing for people who are living on the streets. It's it's amazing what he does. So that's why his channel is growing so big because he does a lot of wonderful stuff. But um, at this point, most people are galvanized into not believing any of this. Most people think we're crazy. At this point now, at least put into their ears that an event is going to take place and millions of people on this planet are going to disappear, children, adults, airplanes are going to crash, cars are going to crash, houses are going to burn down because they left the stove on. So many things are going to transpire at that moment and you can see the lies being set up right now, right in front of us. The lies being set up, you know. These are we don't know what these things are. They floated that balloon across this country to get our attention to make us think about that type of stuff. And now they're saying and they even took a semi down. I saw it on Facebook. They took a semi down the highway with something covered. They're saying it's the size of a car. These are some small aliens, right? They're really tiny. Bent on taking over the world, huh? So the lie is being set up. And there aren't many, very many of us that uh, are watching and listening to this lie that's that's unfolding right before our very eyes. And I really I really was like, how are they going to do this? How, how is it going to be just like, bam, all these aliens are attacked? No, it's going to be subtle. They're going to draw us in slowly. Um, they might even... Uh, they can't do it. They couldn't do it to the bride. The bride knows. We know. We already know the truth. It can't be done to us. But to those people who don't know this event's about to take place at this point, I think it's super important. And that's what I do all day long is something's about to happen. And when it happens, they're going to be, wait a second, this guy at work who's no longer here, 
has told me that something major is going to happen. And the news is saying, I tell them, don't believe the news. They are going to lie to you. <laughs> They're going to lie to you. And I asked them, I said, do you think those are aliens? What do you think those are? And they're like, the heck could be. What's, what stops her from being other worlds? I'm like, God, this is the only one. This is it. Satan wouldn't waste his time here for um, 6,000 years trying to corrupt us uh, if there was somewhere else to be. I mean, he he already lost the fight here 6,000 years ago, right? I mean, he got us. That was it. He could leave. We could uh, we could mess up our own worlds all by ourselves. We didn't need Satan's help to do that. So, uh, but they know, they know. And I said, you know, this moment's going to come, and I won't be here. And you're going to see a lot of people disappear. And uh, just make sure you understand what just happened. And I tell them what is going to happen. You know, I, I uh, obviously I tell them. You know, go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord in your heart. By your, you don't, you don't even need to tell me. You can be hard headed about it in front of me all you want, but when you're by yourself with your Father, you're a different person. We all are. You know, uh, when we're by ourselves with our parent, we're just, we're just kids still, right? I'm almost 60 years old. When I'm around my father, I'm just, uh, just a kid still. He's my dad. You know, so. Um, it's just, it's just the way we are, right? And that's how we're going to be when we get to heaven. We're going to be like children and we're going to be in front of the most amazing, amazing God that did everything. And we're just going to be, I don't even know how I'm going to stand. <laughs> I don't even know how. It's just like, Jesus is going to walk up to me and I'm going to be like, uh, I hope I don't remember all the terrible things. I think all the terrible things we did will be wiped away, I hope. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be quite the moment when that takes place, you know. Looking forward to the hug. I really am not a really huggy person, but I'm looking forward to that hug. <laughs> so, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and uh, go tell somebody. Go read the Book of Esther and go tell somebody that this event's about to take place. They're gonna think you're crazy, but it's okay because when it does take place and they see it, they will get a double portion. Don't let them be like the fifty prophets who saw it and didn't believe. Don't let them be like them. Warn them that this event's about to take place. All right, Repo Man 64. I know as soon as I get off, something it is every single time I make a video, I get off, some major stuff goes down. You know, once it was a, a, an earthquake, mega earthquake, and then the last video, all of these um, spaceships that they're shooting down everywhere all of a sudden, Ask yourself, why'd they let that first one fly all across the country? And then now, as soon as they see them, they're shooting them down. And now, all of a sudden, they're not weather balloons. They're something else entirely. This, the lie is being set up. Just just prepare prepare somebody. Go prepare somebody for what's about to happen. Are we going on Pura? Are we going on Valentine's Day tomorrow? I don't know. I'm going to keep watching, keep praying, keep listening. Every sound I hear, I run outside. <laughs> So I'm like a I'm like a 12 year old. As soon as I hear something, I'm like, is that it? That's all I'm waiting for. Can't. Uh, there's nothing else I really. There's nothing else I want. There is nothing else I want. So anyway, let me get off here. I'll keep talking. We'll talk to you later.